Hello, my name is Christy Whitfield, and you are listening to Mayor Bowser's Every Opportunity to Rise podcast. Hello, and welcome to season two of Mayor Bowser's Every Opportunity to Rise podcast. My name is Christy Whitfield, and I'm the director of the Department of Small and Local Business Development. Today, we are talking about access to capital, small biz, big government. Um, I have two great colleagues today to help me have this conversation. You know, DSLBD works hard every day to hold the door open for small business, but we know that that money, you know, money is the lifeblood that uh, that helps keep these businesses running, and uh, and without it, the whole thing stops. Um, so we're going to let our businesses introduce themselves, and we're and then we're going to have a quick uh, conversation about their uh, different their different perspectives on this big topic. So I'd first like to introduce Bill Reddick. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Christy, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, participate in this podcast. Oh, I'm you. excited about it, and uh, my uh, I'm president of Plenary Enterprises, which is a general construction company. We um, incorporated in uh, 2012, been in business eight years. We uh, do general construction, construction management, uh, specializing in interior renovations, roofings, and electrical work. Well, welcome, welcome. Thank you. And then Fonta, Fonta, tell us about yourself. Sure, I'm super happy to be here as well. I am Fonta Gilliam, CEO and founder of Invest Susu. We are a financial technology company and a CBE based here in Washington, DC. And we use artificial intelligence and social banking uh, to build software for banks and governments. Artificial intelligence, all right, all right. So that sounds scary. Hmm. Computers are rising up. So let me, uh, let me ask you, uh, in this uh, very prosperous time, I will say that it, it, it doesn't seem like it's a easier, doesn't feel like it's easier for, for businesses to get money. I, um, I know that last year we worked very hard with some CDFIs to make sure that we were getting more money into the pockets of small business. Um, we are hearing every day that it is harder and harder. We worked with Wake Up, we work with LEDC, we work with Life, Life Assets, and we hear that it is still hard to get money, that it is slow to get money. We leveraged $200,000 of DSLBD last year, and we celebrated at the beginning of this year uh, over $1.7 million of loans into the pockets of small business. And we were really proud of that at DSLBD, except for one thing, it is not enough. Mm. You know, we mm. know every day that it's not enough. Mm. You know. Tell me your impressions of sort of the ability to get capital as a small business in this city. Well, getting capital for a small business is one of your major challenges. Uh, having capital is a necessary requirement for your business. Depending on what your business is, the level of capital varies. I'm in the construction business. Uh, nothing happens without capital in construction. <clears throat> um, in talking about how small businesses get capital, you don't get capital by preparing for it when you need it. Uh, You're going to need it. Mm -hmm. You have to, when you start business, start preparing for when you need money. Money is a weird, getting money is a weird thing. When you need it, they don't give it to you. When they don't, when you don't need it, that's when you make arrangements to have it. That's, that's, true. that's very true. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Now, since I get to be the host of this podcast, I get to stack the deck in my favor. <laughs> and I know that we launched a great resource on the government website, and that the Bowser administration is very focused on access to capital. And so I'm going to ask a load of question. Fanta, tell me about uh, tell me about the Thing that you helped make for the Bowser administration this year. Yeah, mm. Mm, my pleasure. <laughs> um, so maybe I can a little start about kind of the origins of how it came to be. That would be great. Um, you know, the director's talking about DC Capital Connector. Oh, that sounds great. Yes. Tell me more. <laughs> it can be found at www.dccapitalconnector.com. It's essentially a uh, 
It's a fintech solution for DC government. It's really designed to use artificial intelligence and all of the amazing resources that DC government and DSLBD can, can offer businesses, coupled with um, smart connections to our partner banks. Um, and what we've done is created an intelligent lender matching platform that connects small businesses to the right type of capital and resources at the right time. And I say right type um, because I think that's really important. Um, it's important because of how we're doing it and why we're doing it. So many small businesses um, get frustrated because they'll go to the very large banks, for example, mm -hmm. that they might mm -hmm. bank with on a daily basis to try to get a loan. But oftentimes, for many of us, if you don't have the perfect credit score or if you are a new company and don't have a lot of revenue, it can be really hard to get approved at those banks. And those people will stop there. Um, we wanted to create a solution that uses artificial intelligence and what we know about credit readiness and how um, a lot of the resources that um, that are offered by banks that, and lenders that people don't know about. We wanted to use that um, knowledge, build it into a technology platform that connect that could connect people to um, banks that they're more likely to get approved from. Um, and so, for example, D.C. government has a lot of partnerships with local banks like WACF, uh, LEDC. Life Assets. These aren't um, organizations that most people will know, like they know Bank of America, Wells Fargo, but they have a much, um, they are basically have a, a social mission to really lend to small businesses that aren't the perfect, um, that might not necessarily have the perfect credit score, but have a lot of potential. Well, and let me just say, I, uh, I think credit worthy is a, is a, is a word that lenders use that sort of makes me prickle sometimes. And when mm. I talk to the lenders, it, it really bugs me because I know, I know that when I started my business, like many, many real business owners, I did it on like friends and family and credit cards. Mm -hmm. And that is just the reality. And that what that ultimately does for people running solid real businesses, is tank your credit score, yeah. right? And so the people, the good people, honest people running good businesses get sort of uh, dinged in their credit because they're doing what they think they need to do okay. because they don't believe they could get a bank loan, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing that I love about this tool is that it, it, it takes it to, it takes those people to lenders that understand that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think that this, you know, this is one of the many types of resources that I think is important that we have to make for the small business community. Yeah. And it came candidly from me complaining. I mean, that's real talk. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit more about your business. Walter. Yeah. So I mentioned we're a fintech company. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is when we launched um, InvestSusu three years ago, we were a startup. We were pre-revenue, meaning we weren't, we didn't have any existing contracts. We weren't mm -hmm. making money. Oh, pre-revenue. Yeah. Pre-revenue. That sounds, that sounds, <laughs> that sounds fancy way. <laughs> <laughs> meaning broke. <laughs> and, um, and we were challenged with how do we build uh, technology solutions that we really know people need, mm -hmm. especially small businesses like me. Mm -hmm. I had a finance background. Um, I had done a lot of work abroad. I came back to DC, uh, bought a house here, looked mm -hmm. around my community and said, we need some technology solutions that can help people here, mm -hmm. especially businesses. And so at that time, we didn't have a lot of money. And so we had a bootstrap. Mm -hmm. um, and what do I mean by bootstrap? You know, we weren't ready for a bank. Uh, we couldn't have gotten approved at that time. Um, I didn't have a rich uncle that was going to give me hundreds of thousands of dollars to build my technology. I know. Where's my rich uncle? I know. <laughs> if only. Um, and so I really focused on one, um, other alternative ways to access capital. Uh, things like grant opportunities. And DC government provided a lot of opportunities in that space for us to, for us to apply to different programs and initiatives that had funding, uh, resources, training to help get us capital ready. Mm -hmm. um, I also really focused on, you know, just being scrappy, looking at creative ways to test and pilot product partnerships was a really big one for us. And that helped to bring resources and support. Um, and it was through that process um, that we were able to essentially create, um, build a company to the point where we actually could access capital, both from banks and also attract venture capitalists. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we grew in Vesusu, through grants, through creative strategic partnerships and through accelerator programs. That's great. Now, speaking of scrappy, <laughs> Bill Reddick. <laughs> now, let me ask you to tell a little bit more about your story. You know, traditional traditional financing is one thing, but I also I'd like to ask you to talk a little bit about bond bond financing. Bond financing, because again, as I stack the deck <coughs> in my favor, 
We have the DC surety bond program, which is, you know, a lot of construction companies need to have bond financing and that can be sometimes tough to get, right? Sure. I, uh, my company was fortunate enough to be successful in their marketing and came upon an opportunity that was bigger than our capacity, bonding capacity to take on. And I've been in business uh, for eight years. And over that time, the one of the first things I did was I became certified with your agency. And during that period, primarily my involvement with uh, your agency, Department of Small and Local Business Development, was I went attended the classes and workshops that you have. Um, when I had this opportunity, um, I, I wanted to talk to you all about how to, uh, uh, how I could use it, how you could help me. And I saw a uh, uh, that there was a, an event where you were giving um, awarding loans to small businesses. It was in uh, a, a facility in Southeast. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about about uh, to be a successful business person is you have to be committed. You have to be determined. I was committed, determined to talk to you that day. I remember. <laughs> I remember. And I waited and waited until everybody, the line of people went down and they're like, okay, she's got to go down. I said, no, no she can't go yet. No, she's got yet. to talk to me. Indeed. And I explained my problem to her and she uh, uh, directed me to this gentleman by the name of Michael Bing, who gave me a meeting and I talked to him and um, you all, he directed me to some consultants as well as to the uh, Washington area community investment fund known as WACIF. And they um, assisted me in, in getting the financing and, and, and bonding that I needed to uh, to finance the project that uh, I'm working on today. So um, that's how you guys helped me. But I think broader than that, uh, a a as a business person, we are very fortunate in Washington, D.C. to have the resources that your organization offers. What uh, we have to do as business people is go after them. Uh, what my story, I hope, um, tells people is that when you have an opportunity, uh, that, that same uh, dogged determination that you use to market and get the business and develop your marketplace, you use in finding financing or bonding or whatever it is, and the uh, uh, Department of Small and Local Business Development is a, a, a resource that needs to be utilized. They don't go out to you uh, directly and say, what do you need? Although they do generally do that. But you as, an in, as, as a business person have to understand that this is a, a wonderful resource and you have to go get it. I think that's I think that's great. Oh, they're giving me. Well, that might be one of our, our last uh that might be you might get the final note we're getting the we're getting the wrap up okay. I, uh, <laughs> All right. you know i think that um i think that is a, a good note to end on you know dslbd is definitely here mm -hmm. to help people take their business from wherever they are to whatever that next step is going to be we know that people need support from a bunch of different angles and i think the lessons are that you know it's not always bright shiny days and and Sometimes people stumble. Sometimes people fund their business in ways and they need a little bit of help. And when that happens, I want people to know that DSLBD understands that there's a director that probably made some of those same choices. And sometimes those choices were the choices available to you at the time. And, and let us help you figure out what that next step is. You know, access to capital is a real issue and we have some real solutions. Thanks for listening to the EOTR podcast. Please subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Join us next time to learn more about the resources available to you from the DC government. I want you to join the conversation. Use the hashtag EOTRPodDC or email us at EOTRPodDC at DC.gov. Thanks again.